Hi, thank you for the introduction. Oopsie daisy. Uh, I'm Jan, as you said, I work, ah, sorry. I work with the CTU in a joint project with Avast. And I will walk you through our work in progress research project into how to, def how to detect attack vectors in behavioral graphs. Okay, let's start with a graph. Graph is a structure with two sets, set of nodes, vertices, and set of edges that usually depict certain relationship between those vertices. So what do we represent with that structure in Avast is the run of a system, usually a computer. Those nodes depict processes, files, URLs, and on edges, you can see whether a process tried to reach for an URL, URL whether it tried to copy a file, whether it tried to spawn a new process, and so on and so on. And as an example, this would be a user, you know, trying to reach to a certain website, and then the browser downloading an image as a process of getting that website to the user. Well, let's take a look at a more interesting web uh, example. That user reached another website that was called, let's say, i1000dollars.com, and it downloaded a very suspicious exe file, you know, with a similar name, and started to run a process. And hopefully, if you have a good AV, the last process that would be the malware that you actually try to run here would be marked and labeled, and your computer would probably stop and then send that graph to us. And this is the last piece of the data that we have as well. We have labels for malicious processes. And we assume that all the others that are not known to us are, or are known, some of them, that are not malicious, because we can't be really certain, but the probability is very low. And now, what the attack vector is here? Well, that's the part that were there between the browser and the malware itself. And this is what we would like to detect in an automated fashion from all those graphs that are submitted to our database. OK, so how do we approach this problem? So the idea is, let's use a graph neural network and then try to explain why they had decided whether something is a malware or not, and hopefully part of, the dis part of the explanation will be the attack vector. So let me walk you through what graph neural network is. So it's a neural network that in an iterative way tries to learn vector representation or embedding of particular nodes or the entire graph. And it does that by first aggregating neighborhood of each vertex and then combining that information with its own representation. And this, re this process is repeated on and on. And you can see how gradually it actually integrates larger and larger neighborhood. Let me walk you through a very simple example. Let's assume we have this graph of ABC. And f if we want new representation for the node A, we first transform representations of B and C, aggregate them together, because that, that's uh, how we get the neighborhood of A, right? There was nothing else. And now we combine it with the representation of A and get a new one. And this process is run iteratively around and around. Where do the neural networks come into play? Well, usually those black boxes that I call transformation are some kind of a neural network or some other functions. Uh, actually, the choice of those two steps is very crucial for the neural network to actually work. And as an example, I picked three. Uh, you can see that they are quite different. You know, some people use a neural network to process the features of the neighborhood, then take a maximum of those, and then combine them with simple weights. Some people first take mean of all the vectors around, and then use a neural network to combine the representation, and so on and so on. And the last one came from a paper that actually shows mathematical proof that this is actually the most powerful GNN that you can have that should be able to solve most of the problems. In practice, usually you have to add something more to tweak it for your problem anyway. But let's assume that this works. Now, can, can we actually tell why the GNN has decided that certain node was classified as malware or not? 
Well, that was part of our research project as well. Unfortunately, we had pretty good idea how to approach this, but during that time, there was a paper, very influential one, from Leskovitz and Jung that solved exactly the same problem. So I'm going to present you that because that's the official state of the art at the moment. OK, so I want to have a classification for a node, and I want that algorithm to show me these are the nodes responsible for the classification, and the rest of the graph was not interesting. How does it work? Well, the GNN that I talked previously about learns probably the distribution of labels over all different kinds of graphs. And now you can think about that graph that not only all the different graphs that we threw at it, but also you can take that graph and slowly start stripping it of vertices, and you will be getting more and more different graphs. And if you treat that as a random variable, what you actually want is to maximize mutual information between that graph structure and the label that was given to you. And of course, you can't solve that directly, but with a little bit of uh, mathematical manipulation and assumptions of the mean field theory, you can arrive to an equation that uses a mask of numbers between 0 and 1 that represent which nodes you would like to have in the graph and which you wouldn't. That turns out can be optimized by a regular gradient descent, and you can use you know, whichever framework or your favorite that you like for uh, gradient descent optimization. So we arrive to the explanation of which nodes were important. Not only that, it turns out it can be very easily extended to explain edges as well, to tell me which edges were important, which were not, but also features on particular nodes. Right? And th that's perfect. So we have a classifier that can tell whether something is in malware or not. We have this great explainer that can tell us where did we come to that conclusion? And we even have a great framework that was developed by Tomáš that can do that very efficiently. Now, so it should all work fine. So we trained that classifier. It was great, right? It got AUC of 0.998, maximum is 1, perfect. And then it didn't find the attack vector. So why would that be? Well. There is a little issue. How do you, as people, recognize something being a malware? Well, you usually recognize it either based on its behavior, right? So imagine that file goes and starts encrypting random files in a computer. Well, that's not nice. And that's probably malware. Or you recognize it based on some of its features. So that's usually what AV does, right? It, it, has, it knows certain hashes of malware. It knows which parts of a file if they look a certain way, uh, point to malicious behavior, and so on and so on. However, if you think about where that attack vector lives, well, that lives on the other side. It's all here. But most probably, the explanation of whether something is in malware is here. So we are never going to get that attack vector if we use that whole graph. So in order to solve that problem, we can't do the classification on that part of the graph. We actually have to classify whatever is in causality before that malware was ran. And if you think about that, that's a pretty difficult problem. Because I'm trying to decide whether there will be a malware ran on a computer before it actually happens. Right? So, we, in the beginning, we actually we knew that the behavior, we don't really want that there. But we included that one node that, shows the, that represents the malicious process in the computation, because you can have certain synergistic effects, right? There can be features that, in combination with whatever is before in causality, can determine that something is in malware, but on their own, it wouldn't work. And then we spent a lot of time on actually balancing whether the classification worked well and whether the explanation came from features of that, vector, of that node, and so on and so on. And we never really got where we would like to be. And also, uh, it takes a lot of time to run graph neural networks. They are very computationally expensive. 
Fortunately, we had a recent very breakthrough that I think will allow us to run it on much bigger data, because if you think about what we are trying to do, you can't really do that from 200 runs of a computer, right? You would need probably thousands or even more. And do we think it's possible? Yeah. I still think it's possible to actually achieve that goal. It will be just a bit harder than we thought. Because if you think that example that I gave you before at the very beginning, if I tell you that someone reached a suspicious URL, like you will obtain $1,000 if you click on me, and then it downloaded exit file that says you'll get a lot of money if you click on this as well, you probably all know that something very suspicious is going to happen, right? And I believe that the network can still learn that, and it can probably learn much more of those pointers to malicious behavior being run on the system in the future. Okay, thank, I would like to thank to the whole team, to Tomáš Pevny, who's my supervisor, to Petr Kovács, who started with us this project at Avast, and Miroslav Derbal, who is an expert on the behavioral graphs in Avast. Thank you very much, and check out the link to the framework.